everybody, Lisa Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I just want to do a short video about something that kind of just struck me a little while ago, and I thought that it would be worthwhile to share it with some of you who might be interested in this idea of how we can stay happy and how we can stay in the flow, and rep understanding like what is stopping us from staying in the flow, right? So lots of us understand that repressed emotions, suppressed emotions, they're like they're like bricks in our belly, right? And, you know, um, this morning I had a conversation with my husband, Anthony, and trying to get him to understand this idea that you can accept that something happened to you, but that doesn't mean that you've processed it or that you've cleared it. A couple of things have happened um, that are going on in my husband's life, and Although he says that he accepts it, I'm not so sure he's cleared it. I'm not so sure he's processed it. So I said to him, it's sort of like, you know, um, having something happen, for instance, if I use what happened to me in my life when my mom passed away last year, she had dementia, then she ended up going into renal failure. And um, my father, in my opinion, and in the opinion of my sister, was not very nice to her towards the end. And... So I had this, this rock of, in my stomach, like this thing was happening with my mom and I'm three hours away or whatever, four hours away. And I have no control over what's happening, right? So there's this brick in my stomach. This thing is happening. It's a part of me. I'm experiencing the emotions tied to this event. It's in me. Now what? I have to accept that this stuff is happening and I don't like it. But now what? I had to go through a process of completion, if you will, or clearing, where I had to get to a place where I was able to accept what was happening, accept I was unhappy about what was happening, accept that there was nothing I could do to control it, but also get to a place where I needed to release it so that it, it was sort of like no longer able to stay as a rock in my stomach. And so my thought process was accepting, like I said, accepting that this is something I can't control, understanding that this is outside of my, my human ability to control it, um, understanding that all I can do is really is move into a state of acceptance and surrender and do what I could to actually forgive the situation or release it, forgive that I was human, forgive that, um, you know, my mom had was diagnosed with MS and then had strokes, just sort of like in my head, it was like, I'm forgiving this, I'm forgiving this, because I can't control it. So I think forgiveness is sort of a good way to explain or to kind of like perceive or understand this process by which we are releasing our resistance to something that we can't control. In my opinion, when I am in resistance to something that I can't control, I am suffering. Um, I said to my husband this morning, I said, you know, aunt, you can have something happen. It's sort of like swallowing a brick and you can say to yourself, yeah, I know this happened. Yeah. I know my mom passed away. Yeah. I know that, you know, um, having this issue with my partner or my children or whatever, I'm having this issue and we could be aware of this issue, but that doesn't mean that we've allowed this issue or the emotions tied to the issue primarily resistance to the issue doesn't mean that we've completed this or processed this experience. It doesn't mean that it's moved from our belly. If you think about a brick in, a brick in terms of energy, it doesn't mean that this brick that is in our belly has moved through our chakra system and out through our crown chakra and is no more, no longer affecting us, right? That does not, doesn't mean that it comes to understanding, you know, how some of us get stuck. I wanted to do a video about this idea of resistance and getting out of resistance. So like I'm sure so many of you can relate to, every time I turn my damn computer off, at least with a Mac, every time I turn it off, you know, I have to log in with my passwords again, right? And so I don't store my passwords on my computer. I change my passwords all the time. So it can be frustrating when I log out of the computer and log back in again and I have to go searching for my Instagram of whatever, Instagram password or my Facebook password. It's just annoying. And just a couple of minutes ago, 
I was checking my Instagram account and because I forgot what video I posted and I was logged out of Instagram and I had to log back in again. So I used one password that I thought was correct. No, nope, wrong password, right? So I'm like feeling myself getting frustrated and I heard myself say, don't resist it. Complete the circuit. What is the goal, Lisa? The goal is to get on Instagram. That's what you want, want right? You want to get on Instagram. You want to make sure you put, you didn't double post a video. That's what you want, right? That's the circuit you're trying to complete, right? That's the goal. That's the agenda, right? Why are you getting in the way with this huffy puffy stuff? Literally, like these were the ideas that came to my head. And I started to laugh at myself in my kitchen because I was like, how silly is that? You know, I have a goal, I have an agenda. The agenda is quite easy to get to. All I have to do is look for my password, type it in, and poof, like magic, I get what I want, right? And so, but I just realized like so often times when it comes to us being stuck in emotions, it's that precisely. We are resisting what is. So we're having a fight with our sister or we've been um, discarded by our moms or we've been fired or something terrible is happening in our neighborhood or whatever, right? Whatever, whatever it is, this thing that we are in resistance to that has gotten the way of us being able to flow. It could be, and I'd like, I'm very interested in your, in your feedback. When we are in resistance to what is, and when we instead choose to surrender to what is, even if what is, is something that we hate or despise, if we can surrender to what happened, because it's already shown up in the 3D world, right? Remembering that whatever has happened in the 3D world has already manifested. So there's no more juice in it, meaning that all the power is in the now. So if this thing is happening now, right? So if I don't want to have this silly Instagram issues issue in the future, I can memorize the password, right? And then I won't have this issue in the future. So in the now, I can effectively help create my future and, and avoid this problem. But when it comes to things that are bigger issues or issues that are more dank and, and more difficult to understand, if we can train ourselves to get in the vicinity of surrender, right? Surrendering to what is, and then understanding that what's the goal? The goal is to get back into the flow. Flow of what? Flow of life. Life spirals up. It doesn't spiral down. You know, we're supposed to be evolving, is spiraling up. So what we want to do is make sure that we're in the process of spiraling up, which means that we have to find ways to whatever whatever's blocking us, whether it's an emotion, a suppressed emotion, or um, it's a behavior or subconscious programming. If you follow my work, you know that, you know, I'm a big believer and I, I'm absolutely, someone just asked me in a podcast, what do you believe? I believe that we're all asleep until we wake up and we realize we were asleep. Uh, we're all unaware until we're aware that we were once unaware. I absolutely believe that childhood programming and the duality of consciousness is the culprit for such unhappiness. I believe that we're all programmed, especially up until the age of seven. And this programming creates neural pathways that fire together. And through repetition, observation, and consistency, we develop patterns, neural, neural pathways. We develop uh, linguistics, our narrative, the inner critic has a certain language. It's not our language. It's not my voice. It's not, it's, it's not, it's my mother's voice. It's my father's voice. It's, it's the voice of all the authorities in my life. Um, it's the voice of those that I've given power over to very naturally. Children give their power over to their parents. Actually they're powerless to their parents. That's the natural order of things. And so, you know, we're trying to, uh, break through all of these ideas, we're trying to pierce the veil of unconsciousness, we're trying to come full circle, and essentially what we're trying to do is create uh, complete circuits or get back into the flow. You are an energy being, and you know when you are flowing, you are not blocked, and suppressed emotions can create blocks, uh, faulty thinking, disorganized thinking, an unbalanced mind, meaning a mind that is highly emotional and because of CPTSD or triggers, not your fault, dear one, not your fault. Um, but the goal in that situation is to reduce the fight or flight response, right? Meditation will reduce anxiety. Meditation will reduce these 
your reaction to CPTSD-like um, symptoms. CPTSD is real. Your brain is recalling a painful memory. That's what it was designed to do to keep you safe. And so um, our journey is to figure out as many ways as possible to get back into the flow and, and to complete this amazing circuit. And this, I believe the circuit is, you know, from it, it within the circuits within us that are trying to connect with love and light and growth and expansion. Um, when I am connected to myself, mind, body, and soul, when my higher self understands my lower self, when um, I am integrated spiritually, psychologically, when I am integrated biologically, chemically, anatomically, I get it. Consciously, I understand that I am, you know, uh, there are many facets to the being that I am, and I've nestled them all, and I've I've come full circle, and there is no more, uh, there is no longer an adversarial relationship between the many selves that I have. I've experienced integration, and you can think of that as a circuit, and you can think of a repressed mo emotion or an emotion that you're aware of, but you haven't yet completed or processed or cleared as interrupting the flow, interrupt, uh, interrupting your ability to flow and connect to higher self, connect to higher consciousness, um, and to really continue on with the spiritual path of enlightenment to the point where you feel integrated. You feel like you're able to flow love um, in spite of what's happening around you, which is a really beautiful way to live your life. That's where you can experience many instant manifestations. That's where you know, um, you can be unaffected by what people are saying to you and about you. It's not, that's a hard climb. I can tell you that's a really hard climb and it takes a while to get there. You know, you know how you get there by surviving these things, right? You know, if you've fallen off the horse and you just keep getting back up the spiritual horse, let's say, um, and you just keep getting back up on that horse, no matter who says what, no matter how many, how difficult it is for you. No matter how many times you know you um, fall back into faulty programming, or you pick the wrong person, or you fall into another old pattern, if you're that person that keeps getting up again, you're flexing muscles, dear one. You are creating muscle strength, spiritual muscle strength, you know, in, in ways that you can only Im under imagine. And one day you will understand it, right? So um, everything that I've been through has prepared me to for for something more and you know it's really hard to imagine that in your darkest times that's when you're being galvanized right and you know as long as you keep your eye on the the goal as long as you believe in the light that is within you as long as you absolutely know that in spite of what anyone has ever said to you like you could have the crappiest parents in the world I mean really really horrible, terrible experiences, you know, you could have been through, um, you know, really god awful experiences in your country or in your family or whatever, in spite of anything that's ever happened in your external experience, I really hope that you know that there's a light within you and that you are enough. And just because other people didn't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And my hope for you is that in spite of what's ever happened in your life, you believe in that light that's within you and you strive for it and you go and you keep going after your dreams and you keep trying to figure out what's getting in the way of me from flowing, what's preventing me from, you know, seeing this emotion through, you know, what does this completion feel like? What circuit am I looking to complete? Know that, you know, our resistance to what's happening in the now can prevent us from flowing and can prevent us from being able to manifest the things that we deserve and that we desire. So, you know, just keep in mind this idea of resistance and getting out of the way of what you desire. Know that, you know, um, it could be silly things like which is what I shared today about Instagram, like being in resistance to this idea that I'm annoyed, like, okay, I'm annoyed, now what do I have to do about it? And then finding the solution quickly, becoming solution-oriented, very often times, those of us from abused homes, we get stuck in the feeling of frustration, right? Or we get stuck in the feeling of feeling stuck. And it's easy for us to kind of like go down a rabbit hole over something very simple, right? 
this idea of resistance and try to figure out what it is, what your goal is, become non-resistant to the solution, find the solution, and move forward. Try to get in the practice of just seeing that more rationally and clearly. And um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about, you know, being frustrated and being in resistance to doing what you know you have to do in order to make something happen. You know, like, you know, we could be frustrated that, you know, we want to go to the gym. We could be frustrated that we have to go outside in the snow to go get our mail. We could be frustrated that we have to walk the dog. We can be frustrated that we got to pick up the piss that's on the floor from the damn dog. You know, which is fine. These are all very normal emotions. But when we're in resistance to what we have to do, I think that's when we suffer. If we can take the resistance away, if we can just say, you know what, I'm not going to be resistant to the fact that the dog pissed on the floor again. She did. And I'm not going to be in resistance to the fact that I have to clean it up because no one else is going to do it. Because that's going to net me my goal, which is a nice smelling home. So, you know, I... I'm using that type of an example to like break it down so it's easier for you guys to try this, you know, in your own life. Um, and also think about this idea of, you know, there's something more than just surrendering to what has been. Um, we have to learn to release what has been. We have to learn to process what has been so that, you know, like I said to my husband earlier, like, I know that you have surrendered to what is, but I'm just not so sure you are okay with what is, and I'm not so sure that you're being as honest with yourself as possible about how you feel about what is, right? And so um, let's, say you, um, you, let's say you are going through a divorce and your spouse cheated on you, and you know this happened and you can say to yourself that I surrender to what happened. It sucks, but I know that it happened. Knowing that it happened and not being in denial that it happened is not the same as releasing those feelings tied to what happened. If you're still angry about it, if you're still sad about it, if you still feel like you know, worthless because of it, right? If you have all of these feelings associated to this event and you haven't processed them or released them, right, then they're still going to affect you, right? And I think that it's really important that we acknowledge this idea of processing an emotion for the sake of releasing it so that we can get it out of our bodies and we can get on with our lives. Not so easy to do, but it is possible to do it. Um, and so one of the ways that you can do this is being more honest about the way you feel. So, so let's say it's, um, like I just said, your spouse, you caught your spouse cheating. So it sounds like this, wow, you know, um, you go to work and somebody asks you how you're doing and you know that they know you're pretty friendly with this person and you know that they know that, you know, your spouse was cheating on you. How you doing? It's not, I'm fine. I'm doing okay. You know, it sucks what I'm going through. You know, I never expected this to happen, but I'm sure I'll be okay. That's honesty. That's integrity. That's authenticity. That is processing what happened. That's not pretending that what happened didn't happen. So I can, it's not pretending that I don't have these feelings, right? So it's about showing up more real and dealing with how you feel. And as you're dealing with how you feel and you're talking about the truth of how you feel, that is you actually processing this emotion so it doesn't become a brick in your belly. So I hope this video has helped you. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of the recovery path and doing what you can to heal from CPTSD, codependency, attachment trauma, faulty childhood programming, um, subconscious programming, faulty neural wiring or wiring that is that works against you. Um, thank you for being brave enough to observe yourself and understand that you are not your thoughts, right? Um, thank you for being brave enough to imagine this idea that the narrative that is playing in your head isn't even yours. Namaste, dear ones. Shine on.
Bye for now.